Paul wrote a blessing, and it's written down in Ephesians chapter 3, 18 to 19, that basically says this, may you have the power to understand how vast God's love for you is. And even though you might feel small, you might feel insignificant among all the billions of people on the planet, to God, you are significant. You matter to him. And so we need help to even understand even a, a, a thimbleful of how much God loves you because he's so great and his love is so great. So Paul, Paul wrote this blessing, may you have the power to understand God's amazing love even though he follows it right up and says no one can understand it because it's so great. But then he, he makes it a little bit more personal and he says may you personally experience the love of Jesus Christ. And then something happens when you begin to understand more about God's love and you begin to experience Jesus' love. You will be made complete. Somebody say complete. How many want to be made complete? I do. I, 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 I want to be made complete in my heart, soul, mind, body, all of me. But Paul said be made complete in the fullness of of life and power that comes from God. Wow. So that's why we have a series of messages right now on the love of God. Because we want to begin to understand even more about God's love. We want to experience it for ourselves. And we want to be made complete with all the fullness and life and the power that come from God. That's a great goal. Will you join me in, in seeking that during this series of messages? Will you, will you join me in seeking to know God's love, to experience it for yourself, and to grow in your understanding of that? Will you, will you join me? As, because sometimes what you seek is what you find. And so let's be seeking God's love. Let's be seeking God's fullness of life and power. And you will find it. This is a biblical promise. So today, I want to explore a little bit more about what God's love means for you. You are made complete. What does that mean? Well, we're going to see this in the life of Jesus today, in a story about Jesus' life. And then we're going to apply that to my life and to your life. So I'm going to read several scriptures today, but probably the main one I would ask you to turn to is Romans chapter 5, verses 6 to 8. And that, that's going to be just a very pivotal verse for us, but I'm, not, I'm going to come back to that in a few minutes, a little bit later. Okay, so one day, Jesus went down to the Jordan River, that muddy Jordan River, and he was baptized by John the Baptist. This is a look at, it, this is the Jordan River, and it is the site where it is believed that Jesus was baptized uh, here. And this obviously is taken today. Many people go there today to be baptized again. But Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. So he was just a wild and crazy prophet of God. And that's pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. Amen to that. <laughs> And so Jesus, is, he's dunked down in the water just like we do in, in church every so often. Uh, we do a baptism service. He, and when he came back up, the Bible says he was praying. And while Jesus was praying, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit in bodily form. Okay, so he is a spirit. The Holy Spirit has no body. But in this moment, he took on a bodily form and he descended on Jesus like a dove. And at the same time, a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved son. He's talking to Jesus. And you bring me great joy. And it is passages like this where we can see God. There is only one God. But he exists in three persons. Three in one, the Trinity. It is mysterious, it's lofty, it's amazing, it's beyond understanding, but it is, it is how God is. And this is probably the clearest picture we see of that in Scripture. You want to know uh, what God is like? He is like a powerful, booming voice from heaven. The authority of all authorities. He is like a spirit. And he is, he is spirit. He is God the Holy Spirit. 
He is gentle and bringing peace like a dove. And he is someone who is so close to us that he would take on flesh and blood his son Jesus and walk among us. God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, only one God exists in three persons. And I wasn't even planning to go there. But that is just a little picture of our God and who he is. Now, this is, a, this is an amazing point in Jesus' life. Because when Jesus was about 30 years old, when he really started to minister publicly in the power of the Holy Spirit, and this was right at the beginning, right before Jesus launched into his public ministry, he goes to John the Baptist to be baptized. And John the Baptist is like, no, 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 you should be baptizing me. And Jesus said, no, we're going to do this because it is a right thing to do when you're following God. He said, I want to fulfill all righteousness. So Jesus did that. But I, I don't know if anyone could have, could have imagined what would happen when he came up out of the water, spirit descends on him like a dove, booming voice from the Father in heaven says, you are my dearly loved son, you bring me great joy. You know what? This was a public declaration of love. And public declarations are important. Last Thursday, in this very room, we had a wedding of two people from our church, Merle Duncan and Serenity Beauchamp. And they made a public declaration of their love as they began their marriage together. Public declarations of love are important. Yeah. They matter. They're a milestone. And we say, by the way, congratulations to Serenity and Merle. We love you guys. So this pivotal moment in Jesus' life, God the Father says, you're my, you're my son. I love you so much. And that's amazing for Jesus. But God made a public declaration of his love for you too. It's written all over the Bible. It, for example, in 1 John 3, 1. So it's the first letter that John wrote to the churches that were in his area. Third chapter, verse 1. See how very much, someone say very much. very much. See how very much our Father loves us for he calls us his children. And that is what we are. Okay, so just let this begin to sink into you. How does God feel about his kids? He loves them dearly. God loves you, Frank, dearly. God loves you, Lisa, dearly. That's how he feels about his children. And that's how he feels about you. If you have put your faith in Jesus, you are a child of God. Would you just say out loud, I'm a child of God? Let's say it. I'm a child of God. That is agreeing with God's word. That's not a positive, like, you know, feel it kind of statement. That is agreeing with God's word, which is true. So if you put your faith in Jesus, you're a child of God. But how do you really know that your heavenly father loves you? Guess what? He does more than just say it. He's a good father who says, it, who says it, I just read it, but he also showed it. And now we're back to that verse I asked you to, to look at. If you've got your Bible or your, or your Bible on your smartphone or whatever, Romans 5, 6 to 8. When we were utterly helpless, wait a minute, I've never been utterly helpless. We were all utterly helpless to do anything about our sin condition. All of us. Yours truly included. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for anybody. <laughs> they would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might, perhaps, maybe, if we're stretching it, be willing to die for a person who is especially good. Someone maybe would give their life like as a really good cause or a really good person or something. But God, 
he showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. We were not good. We were not even especially good. We all, everyone on the planet, were lost in our sin. And that's when God said, I'm going to come and love you. Not based on anything you've done, good or bad, just based on his choice to love. That's how our God loves. This is why I want to try to get you to understand a little bit more about how vast God's love is. I want to get you to experience personally the love of God. Because it's amazing. So when you're tempted to think, oh, wow, I really messed up. I bet God is not loving me too much right now. God said, that has nothing to do with my love. My love is my love because I choose to love. I choose to love the whole world and everyone in it. And you're a part. God loves you. That is his declaration of love. He is unequivocally declared to the whole world, I love my children. That's amazing. You're my child, and I love you dearly. God demonstrated it. Now, a couple of other verses before and after that one I just read, in Romans 5, verse 4, right in the middle of the verse says, for we know how dearly God loves us because he's done something else as well. He has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm just trying to understand and experience the love of God. Okay, wait. So he sent Jesus to die for me and for you while we are sinners. And then he sent his Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Wow. He actually comes into your life, into your heart when you invite him there. And when he does, he brings all of his love for you. And he also loves through you. Wow. Verse 11 says, so now, somebody say, so now. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. You guys, I just want to get this into your heart. I want to get this into your soul and into your spirit. God loves you. You're his friend. Somebody say, I'm a friend of God. Now, that's not just wishful thinking. That's just not like, what what do you call that? Like when you watch a a show, like inspirational, like they just want you to just say it. And it's not just some affirmation that someone made up. This is what God said. You're my friend. Put that on your bathroom mirror. Put that on your phone's, uh, your lock screen. Put that there. That's agreeing with God's word. That's not just hoping it's true. That is agreeing with what God has said is true. So in the Bible, there are four main stories about Jesus, four main um, biographies of Jesus. We call them the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the ones that sort of, they told about similar things. John told about other stuff. Matthew, Mark, Luke all tell us that when Jesus was baptized, Holy Spirit comes down, descends on him like a dove. Father declares, I love you, son. It's so amazing, so great. But all three tell us the very next thing that happened was that the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to meet the devil face on, head uh, head to head, face on. And there's so much symbolism in the Bible, but Throughout the Bible, especially the Old Testament, the wilderness is a symbol of the, like the center of sin. Kind of interesting. And that's where Jesus goes. He goes out into the wilderness to, and, and he faces the devil. And while he was there, the devil tempted Jesus to step outside of the Father's love and provision. He tempted Jesus to meet his own needs and desires apart from God in a way that would not even please God. For example, Jesus had been fasting for 40 days. Okay, I whine when I fast a meal. Jesus fasted 40 days because the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness and said, this is going to be a time of fasting, and it's going to be a time when you're going to meet the devil um, just face on. And the devil comes to Jesus. He's so hungry. The devil said, if 
You are the Son of God. Was Jesus the Son of God? What had he just heard at his baptism, moments or a day, days before? A voice from heaven saying, you are my dearly loved son, and I love you a lot. You bring me great joy. God's word said, that was God's word, did you get it? It was God's word that Jesus, you are my dearly loved son. The devil comes to him and says, hmm, did God say? Does that sound familiar? Genesis, uh, I think, 3? Wow. The devil says, if you're the son of God, I know you're so hungry. Let's do a little trick. Tell these stones to become bread. In other words, prove it. Show me, the devil says, prove it to me that you are the son of God. That didn't work. Comes out of another temptation. He says, if you're the son of God, throw yourself off the roof and see if God catches you. In other words... Prove that God loves you, God the Father. Let's, pr let's prove it. Let's just check this out. Throw, th throw yourself, put yourself in danger, and let's just see if God comes to your rescue. Wow. Devil's bombarding him. The third thing he comes and he says, the Father's going to make you lay down your life someday in order to inherit the kingdoms of the world. But the devil says, you know what? I rule this world. I'll give you the kingdoms right now. No laying your life down. Oh, there's one small thing like Ursula said. There's just one small price to pay. You got to worship me, the devil said. So in other words, the devil's saying, I will show you better love than the Father would because I won't make you go to the cross. At times like this, you better know what God's word says about you. And Jesus fought him with the word, but that's another message. Today I'm talking about God's love. So in the same way, remember, I, I, we're reading this story about Jesus, but I want to apply it to our lives. In the same way, the devil lies to you. And he's trying to get you to step outside of God's love and provision for your life. So the devil tries at least three things. He tries to tempt you where you're vulnerable. He tries to trick you when you're in pain. And he tries to trap you in a false identity. The devil tries to tempt you when you're vulnerable, trick you when you're in pain, trap you in a false identity. I've got a slide for that. Why don't we show that? There you go. So what's the lie behind the temptation? Well, for example, here's a lie. And it's just one of millions that the devil cooks up. But here's, here's a lie behind the temptation. If you can get someone to return your flirtatious stare, then you will be loved. Then you will be desirable. Then you will be worthwhile. What are some of the lies behind the pain trick? Well, if you gamble enough and win big enough, all your needs would be supplied and all your worries gone. That's actually a lie. Here's another lie behind when you're in pain. One of the things the devil tries to trick you with. If you abuse substances or do self-harm, like cutting yourself, for example, here's the lie, then your emotional pain would be numbed or suppressed. But in fact, those things always lead to feeling guilt and shame and painful emotions, and the cycle continues these are the devil's lies. What's the lie behind the identity trap? Well, the lie is, there's a bunch of lies, but one of them is, if you could just earn a positive label, 
then you would be accepted by everyone else who has that label or who appreciates that label. What are some positive labels that people try to get? Athlete. Fashionista. Smart. Creative. You're a creative. You're such a smart person. You're such a creative. Leader. Better. Those are some positive labels that the devil comes and says, wow, if you could just earn that label, then everyone else who appreciates that label would accept you. You'd be in that crowd. You would be loved. You would have a community. So sometimes people, the devil tries to tempt, tempt people with achieving a positive label. Sometimes he tries to attempt uh, to, to tempt people to, uh, to, um, to uh, embrace an alternate label, a label that's different than others. So if, if you would just embrace this alternate la- label, then you would, you would be accepted. People would get you. You would find other people with that alternate label, and they would get you. You would be understood you would be accepted into their community. A couple of examples of alternate labels. Trans. I'm a trans person, so I'm accepted in the trans community. Or I'm gay, a gay person, so I'm accepted in the gay community. If I can wear that label, then all of a sudden I, people will get me, and I will finally be embraced and accepted for who I am. But did you notice that Jesus did not need to go looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for love in too many faces, trying to find that thing I've been dreaming of? Jesus didn't need to do that. Why? Why wasn't he just out searching for love? Why wasn't he on a desperate quest to find the right label to be accepted? It's very simple. The father publicly declared, I love you. You're my dearly loved son. I take great joy in you, the father said over Jesus. So Jesus didn't need to go search for approval, for a community, for a love. He was loved by God. Jesus rested in the love of the Father. And because of that, he resisted the lies of the devil. And he's just simply trusting in the Father's word. You, if you have put your faith in Jesus, you're also a dearly loved child of God. You are just as you are. He has publicly declared it in his word, but also by sending Jesus to die for you while you were still a sinner. You don't need to search for love in all the wrong places because you already have the love of Almighty God, which is too great for you to even begin to understand, but you got to try. When you rely on Jesus' finished work for you. He died on the cross for you. He paid for your sins for you, in your place. He substituted. When you rely on his work, then you don't need to go searching for love anymore. You already found the love of the Father. You, just as you are. Whether things are going well today or they're going rough today, it doesn't matter. You are loved. Here's the big idea of the message. When you rest in the love of the Father, You can resist the lies of the devil. You can. You can. You can. And I have been testing out this theory. And it is amazing what happens when the devil comes with one of those things, the trick, the temptation, or whatever the other T word was. When he comes at you, It is amazing when I just stop and I don't give in to that 
I don't dwell on that, what, what the devil is bringing. And I instead dwell on what it says in God's word. And I just say, I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. I know what you said. I know what you've spoken. I'm already loved more than you can imagine. And that is enough. That is enough. And when I say that, it's amazing how the devil's temptations, tricks, and tortures, they just lose their steam. They lose their power. And I'm able actually to walk away and walk towards God. It is amazing. And this is why I want you to try to understand the love of God and to experience personally the love of Jesus Christ. It will change your life. Because when you rest in the love of the Father, you can resist the lies of the devil. Lies, all kinds of lies. If you do this, this wrong thing, it will make you feel better. That's a lie. It doesn't. It makes you feel ashamed, and it just starts the cycle over again. If you, if you do this certain thing or be, join this certain group, you'll finally be accepted. It's a lie. Because people are fickle, but God is eternal, and he is unchangeable. And if he says he loves you, he loves you. End of story. It's not going to change, no matter what you do. So why don't we just believe this truth? Why don't we just get in this into our hearts and our minds and just live that way that God dearly loves you? Why don't we live from a place that God dearly loves you? Well, because we believe the devil's lies. Why? Why have we believed them? Because the world shouts so loudly. And God uses a gentle whisper. Here he is whispering like crazy about 1,500 pages worth of his whispers of his love for you while the world is just shouting, do this, be this, you'll be fulfilled, you'll be accepted. And that's one reason that we just don't live this out. Why else? Because we're bombarded with counter information. People that don't know God and don't know his love say all kinds of false things about him. God's a hater, his people are haters. Well, that is not true. That is a lie. I'm not going to believe that. Why don't we live out this truth that God dearly loves us? Why don't we live from that place? Because we focus on externals and God focuses on the heart. Earlier, this was not planned, but we felt led to just stop and pray for, for people who are, are, you've been praying for something, but you're not seeing God do it yet. You're not seeing him move. And we heard, even heard a testimony. Of, uh, just, I know it was vague. I, was, I, I didn't want to share a lot of details and stuff, but just that God is moving. He is working in people's lives. Sometimes you don't see it yet, but he is. And that's our trouble. We only see with our eyes. And we look around and we, we haven't seen that answer to prayer, so we just go, God, you must not love me. You must not be working. But that's not the truth. God does love you, and he is always working to reveal himself to you and to bring his plans into your life. The devil has lied to us. He's a liar. Jesus said that's his native language. Lie, lie, lie. I don't know how you, what uh, language... Uh, Linuses, I don't know, liativity, like he, that's, his, that's his, his language, he just lies, that is what he does. And in, he sees you when you're in a moment of weakness, he sees you when you're vulnerable, like he was watching, he was paying attention, Jesus had just fasted for 40 days, he's like, okay, I'm going to take advantage of this situation in Jesus' life, and that's what he's doing to you. He's looking for a weak moment, he's looking for a vulnerable time in your life. We've, we've felt rejected or alienated or ignored due to our perceived assessment by others. We think, man, no one loves me, no one cares. That, that, that's not true. So he's just going to come and just tack on that and lie. We felt bar embarrassed or ashamed due to our own assessment of ourselves. And so then we're susceptible to the enemy's lies and false promises. What are the possibilities if we believed and lived out this truth, God dearly loves me. What could happen in your life? Well, you could resist 
the stuff that the devil throws at you, like temptations, addictions, harmful behaviors, false identity. You don't have to accept those. You could feel accepted. You could feel that you belong, that you are wanted. You know what? Here's the deal. Everyone who's a part of our congregation, for example, just to be very practical, do you know that we are all related? We all have the same Father. If you have put your faith in Jesus, God the Father is your Father now. He dearly loves you. So automatically, you are part of a community. Now often we, we try to encourage you, step into that community. Come out to a group. Be here every Sunday. Serve on a team. Like we're trying to get you to connect with the community that you already are a part of. But you are already accepted here. I know some of your business. I'm a pastor. We talk. You, you, you come, you, you share your stuff. I know some of your business. And you know what? I still love you. You know why? Because I got some business too. And God still loves me. You are already accepted. Quit clawing, quit scratching, quit striving. You are already loved. Right now, you are loved. And you have a community. You don't need to search for a label. Just take this label, follower of Jesus. That's all the label you need. <laughs> and you are accepted. You have a community. We get you. We get you got business because we got business. We get it. We get you need prayer because we need prayer. We get it. We get each other. We already do. And if we have an issue, we're going to work through it in love. So you could feel accepted if you would just get this into your heart and mind. God dearly loves me. And that connects me to his church. Romans 15, 7 says, Therefore, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you so that God will be given glory. So there's two really powerful things in there. One is accept each other. That's a good command. But listen, this is, this is what I bolded in my screensaver. <laughs> Christ has accepted you. Christ has accepted you, warts and all, imperfections and all. He loves you too much to leave you there, but he's accepted you just as you are. He loves you. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. Uh, some other translations say to, who are accepted in the beloved son. Who are accepted in God's beloved son. We are accepted. You are accepted. H how would you feel if you could get that truth into your heart and believe it and walk it out? Well, you could feel confident. You could feel empowered. You could have a healthy kind of pride. Psalm chapter 57 Verses 7 and 10 say, My heart is confident in you, O God. My heart is confident. He says it twice. My heart is confident in you, O God. No wonder I can sing your praises. Wow, worship even changes when you're confident in God. Verse 10, For your unfailing love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. You are so, your love is so vast. Who could even begin to understand it? But we're going to try. <laughs> we're going to try because it's so awesome. You could face temptation knowing that God offers you his love and acceptance. And that is enough. That is enough. The song I was saying a little bit earlier was, is called Jira. J I R E. E H if you're taking notes and it means that the Lord is your provider super cool song by Maverick City and Elevation Worship Jaira and I love the beginning I love the first verse and I love the end where it says that I'm already loved I'm already chosen oh man I just been I have it on repeat and it is changing my life because I'm getting God's word in my mind in my life you could let go of the addiction you could let go of the harmful behavior. You don't have to cut yourself. You don't have to. Because God loves you. And he's enough. He can take your pain. If you're cutting because you're so numb, then he can make you come alive. God has what you need. He is enough. You could prioritize your identity with God. 
over your identity with people and you could dump your shame. That's what would happen if you could just begin to understand and experience the love of God. You don't need to be called trans. You don't need to be called gay to be loved and accepted and have a community. You just need to put your faith in Jesus and you got a community right here. We already love you. You don't need a new label. Just as you are, you are loved. God loves you. Ushers have a little gift for you. Why don't, you, why don't we bring that out? I, I can tell I'm, I'm going crazy here today. But come on, uh, come on down if you would, ushers. We got just a little brochure. I, I didn't order enough because our uh, we've been growing. So there's probably enough for every, every person or every couple. Maybe if you're a couple, take, take, take one for now just to make sure we have enough. And I ordered more. Got more coming in, so I'll have, have more for next Sunday. So here's the deal. This brochure is called 316, and it refers to the Bible verse John 316. And it's the Bible verse says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So ushers, once you get all the way to the front, if you have extras, then just go back and let's just hand out if you have if, if anyone needs one as they come back by, maybe raise your hand, catch, catch their eye. And uh, we'll make sure, then uh, we might be able to, we might have enough for everybody to have one. We'll see. So here's why I give you that. It is, it is just such a touching uh, um, a writing about God's love for you. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged by God's love. So read it for yourself. And then, okay, listen to this next part. Would you look right at me? After you read it, Share it with somebody that you have at least a little bit of relationship with that you think maybe they haven't experienced the love of Jesus for themselves. Read it yourself. Be encouraged. And then, and then just offer it to someone. Say, you know, I read this. It was really encouraging to me. And I just wanted to share it with you. Would you be really, would it be okay if I gave you this? And why don't you read it? And after you do, I'd be curious to know, how did it hit you? How did it hit you? Like, what, what thoughts came up as you read this? Could we get together for coffee in a week and just talk over this? And I'd just be curious. If you hate it, that's okay. You can say it if you love it. That's okay. But I'd just be curious about your reaction. You see what I'm doing? You be encouraged. Then take that love that encouraged you and share it with somebody else. And like I said, I got a bunch more coming next week. So we can just keep the love going for quite a while. All right, would you stand to your feet? And I want to just pray for you. I love you, we love you, God loves you, you're part of a community, you matter, you matter, you matter. Would you bow your heads with me and let's just pray. And if you're online, would you pray also? Let, let, let's just pray. Let me pray for you. So Lord, I just want to first of all thank you for your love. Thank you that you said it you wrote it. <laughs> you showed it. Father, you showed it by sending your only son, Jesus, to die in my place, to die in our place. Thank you, Lord, that you love us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Could you in your own words just say, thank you, Father, that you love me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that you love me. I am loved by you. Praise you, Lord. I love you too, Lord. I love you too. We love you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would help us somehow to understand the love of God, your love that is too great to understand. But help us understand a little bit more. Help us to experience it. And Lord, I pray for every one of us, Lord God, that when we go from this place, that we would begin to walk in this truth. God dearly loves me. God dearly loves me. May it affect our confidence. May it affect the way we, uh, uh, we resist the, the devil's lies, lies about our identity, about temptation, about all kinds of stuff. Lord, I pray that this truth would just take such deep root in us. God dearly loves me. And that changes everything, Lord God. Begin to, begin to change us, Lord. Begin to change us. Begin to change us. Begin to change us. In Jesus' name, amen. And listen, I just want to drag you along on the good journey I'm on following Jesus. It's had its ups and downs. But 
here's the thing. Um, we, we, we learned this from our group study that we're doing right now. Right now in your life, you may have made a million choices over your lifetime, a million decisions to go your own way. You may have believed a million lies of the devil. A million. Because every day he just bombards us. You're not worthy. You're ugly. You're not an athlete. You're not this. You're not holy. You're not worthy. God doesn't love you. Those are a million lies. So listen, would you please get this? This one message is not enough. What this was, was one time counteracting the lie with the truth. Now go and do the next 999,999. So every single day, you got to be going back to God's word and say, I know I feel this way, but I don't care. I'm dearly loved by God. I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. I know what he said. I know what he's spoken. I know it. Okay? So, great. We got one. Now we have almost a million to go. Let's keep going. Let's do this. Put yourself in situations where you're reminded. Let's see you back here next week. Let's not take this casually. Let's, let's like every opportunity, let's put God's word into you. Let's listen to some Christian songs. For, if you haven't done Christian worship, if you haven't done that, you can go to our app and you can see this, the list of songs we sing on Sunday morning. Start there and then your listening device will suggest other things that are like that. Wow. Let's begin to do this. Amen. Let's experience the love of God for ourselves. Okay, bow your head one more time. One final prayer. I just want to invite you, if you have not put your faith in Jesus yet, I invite you to do that, to become his apprentice. How do you do that? Turn from your sin, turn your life over to Jesus, and let him lead. If you want to become a Christian today, maybe you're coming back to Jesus, maybe you're coming to him for the first time. If you want to give your life to Jesus, put your faith in him to save you, forgive your sins, and love you. Would you just raise your hand right now? Just do it. Just be bold. Just do it. Yep, I see hands going up, and I'm just pumped about that. That is awesome. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in hearts and lives right now. You love us so much, and we're responding to you. And online, you can do the same thing. Raise your hand to God. Okay, if you're raising your hand, would you just repeat this prayer after me, but pray it to Jesus. Here we go. Everybody, help. let's help him out. Jesus, Jesus. I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you just prayed that prayer, welcome. And we have a course, uh, just an online course, just to get you started. I want to encourage every one of you, just raise your hand. Take that course. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about it, Pastor Christian? Yeah, so if this was your day, if today was a day where you said, I'm going to follow Jesus, please stop by the Following Jesus table in the lobby. We have a gift for you. We have a free book, a free course. We want to walk alongside you. The book is just the start. The book is just seven principles on how to follow Jesus. But we as a church, we as your new family, we want to help you along. And so this is our commitment to you. This is our reaching out to you and providing you all the resources you need, including friends, okay? All right, so go out there in the lobby. If I don't have enough, I'll make more. Also, um, if you filled out that Connect card, please, on your way out, put it in a little box in the back, and the ushers will collect that. And then if we could have just maybe five or six people to stay afterwards, we need to just set up for groups in the overflow lobbies. We just need to make a circle of chairs. That would be so helpful. Thank you so much. We love you guys. God bless. See you next Sunday.